Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. We're going to take a look in this video at PyTorch. Now, I've covered mostly Keras and TensorFlow in my videos, so this is a bit of a new direction. I'm going to start really at the very beginning. I'm going to do an installation video very similar to the technique that I used to set up Keras TensorFlow for my class. So we're going to look at how you would install PyTorch into a Conda environment, both for the CPU and for the GPU. To see all my videos about Kaggle, neural networks, and other AI topics, click the subscribe button and the bell next to it and select all to be notified of every new video. Okay, so let's get PyTorch installed. The instructions that I'm following this are basically contained on my GitHub repository. So if you just search for GitHub and Jeff Heaton, and this is my GitHub repository. If you go to T81558, this is my course on deep learning. This is mostly a TensorFlow oriented course, at least at this point, but I'm starting to add some PyTorch examples to it. So if you go down here to, well, first of all, before we do that, let's go ahead and download the entire repository. So I'm going to just download a zip file. So here's my course, Applications of Deep Neural Networks. This is mostly a TensorFlow oriented course, but I am starting to add some PyTorch examples to it as well. Do you want to see more PyTorch from me? Definitely click that like button. Let me know. That's how you cast your vote for this thing. And it helps me with the YouTube algorithm as well. Always a good thing. I'm going to go ahead and download my repository, get that at least going in the background. Actually, I somehow have two of them. Okay, so now I have one downloading. We'll let that continue. But if you go to the install directory, this is where we have the instructions on how to install PyTorch. And this sets it up oriented to my class, which is really a good setup for most general deep learning that you might be working on. So here's the instructions for this. The first thing that I suggest installing is Minaconda. Now, if you want to just throw everything and the kitchen sink into this, feel free to install Anaconda. These instructions will work just fine. But I'm going to go ahead and click on the Minaconda link and I'm going to download Python 3.7. Always grab the latest of this. We're going to create an environment with which version we specifically need, but I'm going to click this one and we've now got multiple downloads going at once, which is perfectly fine. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this. Okay, it's done. Let's go ahead and run Minaconda. I'm gonna go ahead and do next. I'm gonna agree. I'm gonna install it just for me. This is not a multi-user system and it's going to install it under my user directory, which is fine. I do actually add it to the path. It warns against this. The only real downside is you might be messing up other software on your computer that makes use of Python. I found usually such software kind of has their own embedded version or other things. This is primarily a developer computer, so I'm just going to do that. If you don't do this, you've got to do everything through the Minaconda prompt rather than just the straight up Windows command prompt. But I'm going to go ahead and click install, and it's installing. This is really pretty quick. If you're using Anaconda, the full blown one, this is going to take much longer. However, I'm going to still go ahead and, well, it's actually done, so no fast forward needed. Finish. All right. I'm not going to register. I've already done that. Let's go back to my instructions here. So the next thing I'm going to do is conda install Jupyter because we want Jupyter notebooks available and we want this installed in our root environment. So I'm going to copy that and open up a command prompt and I'm going to just go ahead, paste that in, press enter, and it's going to ask me to Actually, it doesn't ask me to approve. It just goes for it. I had the Y option in there. We'll fast forward this. This takes a little bit. Actually, while that's going, I am going to multitask. And we've got that zip file that contains my entire course. I'm going to double click that. And that's the, the directory that's contained in there. I'm going to open up a second one of these and go to my user directory. And by the way, this is a fresh install of Windows, so there shouldn't be any conflicts going on. I'm going to copy it there. It takes it a moment to unzip that. So that's ready to go at this point. Now, Jupyter is still going here. It's almost done, but I'm still going to fast forward and skip this final part. Okay, and now it's done. So let's go back to my instructions. We're going to create the environment. So I'm going to create a new environment called Torch. This is Python 3.7. 
I tend to generally run TensorFlow and Torch in separate environments. So I like to use both of them in the GPU and they might sometimes, depending on the version, require different CUDA libraries and that can, that can cause some issues. So I'm just gonna set up Torch in its own completely separate environment. We're gonna install it for GPU, but it's easy to install it just for CPU if you need. Okay, I'm gonna run that. This will take a moment because it needs to install another instance of Python 3.7, and it's done. I'm gonna go ahead and conda activate it. That's actually the next step in my document, but conda activate torch. You can see by this, we're now in the torch environment that I created. See, kind of activate torch, that's what we just did. Now I'm going to do this part. This installs some utilities that I'm going to need later so that I can add this environment that I'm creating to Jupyter. So I'm gonna paste that and it's going to go ahead and do that. I'm gonna say yes. This takes a moment, I'll fast forward it. Okay, it's done. So now you have a choice to make. Do you want to install PyTorch for the CPU only or for the GPU and the CPU? Now, if it can't find your GPU, it's just gonna use the CPU. So you can kind of choose really either of these, but if you're not gonna use the CUDA toolkit, you, you might not actually need that. I'm gonna go ahead and run this version of it here that should support both of those. One thing that does seem to be different about PyTorch, and I've used it much less than TensorFlow. So if anything I'm saying here, please give me comments in the comments section, but this does get me a working version of this that, that I've been used to begin some of my experimentation. But it does seem that PyTorch has a lot more of the GPU toolkit and, and such built into it. So you don't have to, to deal with that as much as you do in TensorFlow. So I'm gonna paste this here and I am going to go ahead and run this. It's coming right from the PyTorch channel. So they maintain this distribution for it. So I'm gonna press enter, does a bit and I'm gonna say yes. Now this does take a little while. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward. And by the way, while this is going, I will also mention as far as GPUs, you need to have a NVIDIA because they support CUDA, which is what PyTorch uses here. There may be other ways to use OpenCL with PyTorch, but this is primarily what I am focusing on. I run a lot of the stuff also in the cloud and for the AWS instances and, and others, it's primarily NVIDIA GPUs that they give access to or, or TPUs sometimes as well. All right, that's installed. So the next step on my list is to run this. Now we need to get this file from that zip file that we downloaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and move into that directory and then we can run this command. Now this installs various like scikit-learn and other packages that you need for my class, but they're also really a pretty good complement of machine learning utilities that you would probably need anyway. So I suggest installing them. You can definitely open up the file and have a look at what I'm including in there. Okay, it's installing all of these additional machine learning libraries used in my class. The class, by the way, is a deep learning applications of deep neural networks, and it's taught at Washington University in St. Louis. I teach one class at a university. All right, it tells me to activate this. Don't worry about that. We're still in Torch, so make sure that you, you're in whatever environment you created. This is a very important command. If you do not run this command, you will, you will not see your newly created Torch environment in Jupyter. This runs very quickly. I am just going to press enter, make sure you're in Torch to do this. The next thing, we're gonna test the environment. I'm going to run this Jupyter notebook. Now it's very important, especially in Windows or only in Windows, that you switch to the environment that you want to run before you launch Jupyter Notebook. Otherwise, it might not find all of the DLLs. Now, this is particularly a problem in TensorFlow. I'm not 100% sure that PyTorch has this issue in Windows, but in Windows, I just get 
numerous weirdness going on. If I try to be in one environment or in my base environment and run other environments. So always be in there. I'm gonna run Jupyter Notebook. It's just a web browser that pops open. And this is all of my course material. All of these lecture notes are set up for TensorFlow. So let's go ahead and look at the install script that I gave you because that is set up for PyTorch. I will definitely be adding more PyTorch examples as we as we go. I'm gonna just go ahead and first of all, make sure that we are in Python 3.7 Torch, but if you're not, make sure that you are in the kernel that you that you started this in. And I'm going to do kernel restart and run all. And it'll get down to the bottom here and you can see it was successful. We have PyTorch version 1.5.1. You might have a later version if you're running this later on. And the version of Python and GPU is available. So that's, that's quite cool. Thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in other things related to PyTorch, please click like on this video, let me know, and this is, this is an area that I'm considering doing additional videos on. Thank you very much, and please subscribe to my channel.